The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors, and are not those of WKYU-TV, its management, or WKU. All right, Hilltopper fans, Hilltopper Nation, we're back. Topper Talks in the house for the next 30 minutes, taking you on a full ride of Hilltopper sports knowledge, along with myself, Sean Williams. The incomparable Woody White is here. Unfortunately, Shane Bearden's not here. He uh, is being investigated by the NCAA for <laughs> signing autographs and getting paid for it. So uh, we will carry on. you item right there. We'll, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll carry on without Shane uh, tonight. So uh, hopefully he'll be back in a week or two. So uh, his uh, day job allows him doesn't allow him to have fun at night with right. uh, us two fools. So Feel bad for him. It's all right, man. <laughs> we'll we'll carry on without him, but. Uh, Obviously, uh, we had some uh, people uh, behind the cameras here mention it's the first show in August, which means it's the first, first day of fall camp. That's right. First day of fall camp, and only about 100 yards away, Hilltopper football team is practicing right now, getting ready for Kentucky on August 31st. So everybody's pretty excited around Can't here. Wait. Petrino's on the prowl. He's uh, already jumping on his quarterbacks pretty hard, so uh, uh, definitely uh, a lot of people are excited to see what the football team does around here. And uh, so they start off the day um, – Pretty much with two different practice sessions. Uh, they're going to break it up uh, the first four days. Uh, going to have the newcomers uh, practice first, and then the veterans will practice. Ve- veterans are actually practicing right now, so uh, the newcomers practice from uh, 2 to 3.30 today. So uh, pretty much consists of all the incoming freshmen, some JUCOs, and some sophomores as well. Uh, so kind of a little bit of mixture. Got some guys in there that does have, that do have some playing time, like Leon Allen and Marquis Sumley. They were part of the uh, newcomer rotation. So, you know, you got guys in there that's got some playing right. experience kind of showing the newcomers, you know, what to do in certain situations and things like that. So, I think it's got to uh, be good for the newcomers just to sort of get in the flow of things. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was out there for the newcomers and uh, kind of been cam- kind of been camped out here. I had my laptop here all day. Right. kind of been camped you out here. So I, I pre- made, you know, mad props to the WKU PBS studios here that's right. for uh, <laughs> <laughs> making it happen. But, uh, yeah, the newcomer practice, well, they look like a bunch of newcomers. <laughs> so it's the first practice, so don't be worried, everybody. But a lot of uh, kind of fumbled snaps and things like that. Right. It was a lot, little bit of disorganization, you know, when you, especially when you compare it to the start of the uh, veterans' practice, which uh, mm-hmm. happened at 5 o'clock. You know, a lot more smooth. You know, those the veterans, they've been through uh, spring with Bobby Petrino, so they know what to expect and everything right. like that. So, uh, you know, you can tell there's a big difference between that. But like I said, you know, uh, the first four practices, they're going to practice separate, and then they'll start practicing together. They'll combine everybody. So, uh, That's by a good the, way to, you know, I guess shake the rust off. Yeah, get back yeah. Get the flow of things before you really start getting to work on. It's kind of like we said, uh, kind of like I was talking to other media members out there, you know, these kids aren't in high school anymore. Right. You know, they got uh, Bobby Petrino and Nick Holt and, you know, kind of breathing down their necks and expecting them to do good things. So, uh, I'm sure so it's a big adjustment from your, uh, your average <laughs> high school coach coming up to Bobby Petrino. I mean, yeah. you got to have a little adjustment period there, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, definitely uh, something to look forward to. So, we're going to toss out a couple questions. Don't forget to uh, holler at us on Twitter at Topper Talk TV. Uh, interact with us, people. It's going to be kind of a freestyle night. We're going to talk a lot about football just because, well, That's what everybody all camp began. Right yeah. So, uh, everybody's pretty excited. Had a, had a pretty good crowd out uh, for the uh, veterans practice uh, mm-hmm. this evening. It was kind of raining a little bit, but it kind of kind of overcast days. So it was kind of nice out there, but there's a lot of people under uh, under the bleachers there, and they were checking things out, and Bobby Petrino and everything like that. So uh, definitely some good stuff. And, you know, you talk about practices being open to the public. A lot of what WKU's practices are, I mean, there's a, a handful that are closed to the public. Right. Uh, but, man, there's a lot of practices that are open. So, I mean, anytime you get a chance to uh, come out here and check them out, definitely do so. I mean, you know, it's not a, like I said, I think people, we, we talk about this and we talk about it on the show. People are kind of worried about, well, but, you know, we're just going to be here one year, man. You know, we're just going to be here one year yeah, yeah. until he goes to a BCS program. Well, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe not. It, either way, it doesn't matter. You need to chill out, just revel in the fact that he's here. He's going to be roaming the sidelines. I still don't think it's sunk in that he's got, actually our coach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why you got to chill out, <laughs> breathe in, relish the moment. Relish the moment. I mean, it's pretty cool to me that they have open practices. You know, I don't yeah. know how many programs do that. I know, you know early on probably some do, but, I mean – that's a good way to get the community involved, get more fan support. I mean, and I mean, you, th- you think about it, you know, Willie Taggart was here, and, you know, we, of course we owe a lot of credit to Willie and his staff, do. but Willie didn't really open the practices right. up to the public and everything like that. So it, it's really cool to have a coach like Petrino come in and then, hey, open practice, and mm-hmm. you can come out and check them out. So uh, uh, definitely a cool thing for the Hilltopper fans to check out. So uh, I did hear Willie Taggart brought the uh, Blue Mechanic <laughs> to his practice. Today. Well, Willie Taggart <laughs> – 
despite the fact that he went to <laughs> South Florida, he is doing a lot of things down there that maybe South Florida, University of South Florida, thinks are very innovative and creative, <laughs> and they never seen it before, but uh, these are all things very that he's done here. <laughs> exactly. I saw their uh, their poster with Do Something as their, their slogan for, yeah, the, yeah. for the year. But I, I did see, uh, I did see you know. the uh, YouTube video of him and uh, Hulk Hogan, <laughs> and uh, he was like carrying around the wrestling belt. Right. So, I mean, I do give him kudos for, yeah, uh, pretty good. for teaming up with the Hulkster, maybe creating the Mega Powers Part 2 hey. or something like that. You know what that, I'm talking that, about? Yeah, right? I do. Okay, I mean, right, I'm, right. I'm old school wrestling. Right, yeah, right, I'm, I'm just checking, man. All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, despite that, um, you know, everything's looking good. You know, we've got a lot of open practices. You can come out and check them out. But uh, we're going to toss out some questions for you guys. Interact with us on Twitter. I mean, what are your expectations for the Hilltoppers this season under Bobby Petrino? We've got a lot of talent coming back, but we obviously got – a lot of question marks, too. We got uh, the quarterback situation. Looks like Brandon Dowdy's pretty much got that solidified right now. Uh, looked pretty good in the first hour I was out there this evening. Uh, but, I mean, also we got question marks on the defensive line, you know, losing, you know, pretty much everybody on the mm-hmm. defensive line, you know, and including Jamarcus Allen and uh, Quintaria Smith. And uh, so that's going to be a big question mark for our defense coming back and also a bunch of wide receivers. You know, we got yep. wide receiver issues. We got Willie McNeil. But well, we don't have a lot, a lot of, of other receivers. receivers after that, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Petrino's going to rely a lot on the freshmen this year. So, uh, and like I said, you know, uh, Kentucky, the Kentucky game's just around the corner. So, uh, you know, give us your uh, thoughts, reactions, predictions for the Kentucky game, predictions for the season. Give us records. What bowl game are we going to go to? Are we going to go to the final National Middle Caesars Bowl? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, you're aiming high. No, well, I don't know if you saw the LA Times article. LA Times, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they mentioned us as a potential BCS buster with uh, a couple other quote unquote mid majors. Yeah, they if had I can to still use that. They had not. the usual suspects up there like mm-hmm. Boise, and uh, I think they might have had Utah State up there as I think well. So. And uh, but yeah, they had uh, they had Western Kentucky listed uh, as number five as as uh, they had just a top five list. They simplified it and just had a top five, but they had the Hilltoppers listed as number five as uh, the team most likely to bust down the BCS doors. Of course, this is the final season that for the BCS, <laughs> and that would be nice. Yeah, because I mean, uh, you know, you're gonna think, you know, there might be a an opportunity to go to like a BC or one of the bigger bowls mm-hmm. uh, after this year, but uh, you know you get the chance to kind of knock down the BCS door. You know, I mean Northern Illinois did it last year. I mean yeah. Northern Illinois, they're in the MAC. I mean, you know, so if they can do it, you know, why can't we? Exactly. You know? Especially, and, you know, we talked a little bit about you know the schedule that we have. There's there's a good opportunity to get some some good yeah good wins early in the season. Things quote, unquote. Set, things set up nicely. If we go two and zero to start off the yeah. season, because you think if we knock off a couple of SEC East teams, no matter how kind of down they are mm-hmm. and rebuilding or whatever, still, but still for a Sun Belt team like us to knock mm-hmm. out a couple of SEC teams would be huge. And you got to think after that, it kind of makes mention of that in the article too yeah. that you know we could possibly be ranked after that. So I mean that would be a good jump start. Well, we saw the the notoriety of Louisiana Monroe got last year just, you know, from beating uh, yeah. Auburn, I think, or whichever beating one they Ar- beat. Beat Arkansas, beat Arkansas they played, played Auburn. That's right. Played Auburn close. I think uh, they actually – they played Auburn close and they played Baylor close. That's what it was. I mean, they were, like, really close and to beating you know, they were teams. getting top 25 votes. And, mm-hmm. you know, if we can, you know, beat the Kentucky and Tennessee games, win those, and then, you know, with Petrino as a coach, yeah. uh, you got to think we'll kind of be the, the story of the season those first Definitely. couple weeks if Definitely. that happens. You know, we got, we got a little bit of name power with the head yeah. coach and everything now, so uh, – yeah, if we can pull those two uh, those two wins off right off the season, I mean, that would definitely set us up. Of course, you know, the, the thing which I've kind of mentioned as well is, you know, starting the season's great. You know, we started pretty well last season, but we didn't end it too well. So right. you got to kind of capitalize on the on a hot beginning and kind of end it well. So, uh, you know, not get uh, lackadaisical and complacent and, and, you know, finish strong. So uh, that's definitely something uh, we'll look forward to. But uh, Shane's actually uh, tweeting at us from uh, Paducah. God rest your soul, Good work, Shane. Shane. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he actually asked us uh, standouts from day one of practice. Uh, I caught the uh, newcomers' practice, all of it. Um, like I said, uh, I was telling Woody before we kind of came on the show, uh, Tywan Taylor, uh, kid from uh, PRP, uh, in-state talent, he looked really good at receiver, uh, running good routes, broke free on a couple of sideline routes, and uh, kind of went the distance. So uh, he was looking really good. Uh, Cam Lewis, another in-state wide receiver. You know, I, we're talking wide receivers because we really need him yeah, to step up. That's really the spot where you can come in and make an impact. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. For sure. Exactly. So, uh, you know, Cam Lewis was another one. He's a really tall receiver, about six foot three. He was really using his size up there. Caught, caught a, about two or three uh 
balls that were kind of over his head, but he kind of leaped up there and made the grab. So uh, using his size and everything, uh, Aaron Jackson, another in-state kid from Frankfurt. I mean, he was uh, he. The practice ended with him going deep down the sideline, grabbing the ball in stride, oh, and just getting down the sideline for. He's a one that I'm really excited to see. Just you now, seeing his highlight tape. Looks yeah. like I mean, coming from a smaller school, I guess, but. Yeah, I mean, you really you really look at the. Uh, the the, fre- the incoming freshman and wide receivers. I mean, another one that kind of stood out a little bit for me was uh, Colin Tyner, a mm-hmm. uh, kid from um, Alabama. Right. Um, small kid, probably about five foot nine, five foot ten, maybe. But I mean, uh, when he gets the ball in his hands, he's really quick, really fast. So I mean, he could be a playmaker in the slot. Um, also, uh, did a, lo- a lot of returning in high school as well. So I mean, he could be a, a danger in the kick return game well, too. It's always nice to have those kind of players that can you know, do damage with the ball in their hands. You yeah, know? yeah. So uh, definitely. Uh, Definitely those players stood out. Another kind of receiver, but he was tight end, is uh, Shaquille Johnson. I mean, dude has a lot of size. And he was going up. He's a big man. He was going up. uh, They were doing some one-on-one drills, uh, receivers and DBs, and they were just kind of going one-on-one. Nobody was really throwing them the ball, but they were just kind of, you know, uh, doing routes and stuff like that. But he's really quick out of his cuts, and he's going to be a mismatch nightmare for a lot of uh, DBs just because of his size. He's really tall, and uh, he definitely uh, does a good job of getting separation from his defender as well. So, uh, you know, those are some names to look out for. I know people were wondering about, well, the quarterbacks. You know, we got Daddy. He's pretty solidified, but everybody's, like, wondering about this Todd Porter kid. He looked really good today. I will give him that. You know, he made the – I think he threw an interception. But, uh, you know, out of all the quarterbacks, you know, we had Todd Porter, Nelson Fishback, and uh, I think the walk-on from PRP that was there too. But uh, as far as those kids, uh, Todd Porter looked really solid, uh, looked really confident in his throws, threw a really nice deep ball. Um, just has a lot of zip on his passes. So, I mean, I think he would probably be one to watch out for. Uh, Fishback had his moments of uh, finding receivers down the field uh, for some long uh, touchdown passes uh, late in the game in 11-on-11 drills. But, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see once uh, Todd Porter kind of gets the hang of things. If Phil actually, you know, him and Dowdy maybe have a quarterback battle this fall, you know, be interesting to see. You know, like I said, I think it's a daddy's uh, daddy's show right. for sure, and I don't really think he's going to give up the uh, the quarterback starter uh, title. With everything he's gone through since he's been here, and you've got to think that he's just extremely motivated to, to keep the job. You know, I mean, I've heard a lot of good stuff about Porter, and I think you know he's going to be a very good quarterback for us before mm-hmm. his time's over here for sure. But, oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I think it's daddy's spot this year, definitely. Just, yeah. You know, like I said, he's gone through a lot, and you know, he's got to be. You know, pretty motivated to get the job, keep the job, and then do well with it. You know. Yeah, and I think you could tell that during uh, during spring. You know, uh, especially mm-hmm. after the first week jitters with Petrino right. and the new coaching staff, it was almost looked like the first practice of the newcomers today. It was a little <laughs> sloppy. You know, <laughs> everybody was a little everywhere, but uh, you know, he, Daddy just kind of got confidence, learned the playbook, did what he had to do. Like you said, he's got that chip on his shoulder. He right. was a starter at one point in time two years he ago. Was. And then three plays into him being a starter, he tore his ACL. So um, he's got a big chip on his shoulder, has a lot to prove. And uh, like I said, I don't think nobody's going to wrestle that uh, right. starting job from him, even though a starter hasn't officially been named. I see a lot of coaching stats through that, man. <laughs> I can't name the starter right now. But, officially uh, unofficial? Officially unofficial, yeah. yeah. Right now it's going to be Dowdy. And uh, like I said, uh, Catching the first hour of the veterans out there, Daddy was looking really good. So uh, I think it's going to be hard for uh, for uh, Todd Porter or anybody to kind of wrestle that from him this year. So uh, and uh, kudos to uh, Demarcus Smith; he was looking better out there making his throws. This yeah, year. it's someone we hadn't even mentioned yet. Yeah, I mean, and I mean he a was a lot of hype behind him. He was, sure. yeah, definitely coming into the spring. He was a little, uh, well, he was a lot erratic mm-hmm. uh, with his throws. I mean, he would throw a really great deep ball. But then all of a sudden he would throw like a short hop on a, you know, slant route or something, right. you know. It, so uh, obviously during the summer he's obviously uh, practiced that. I'm sure the coaches probably said that at the end of spring. He's like, uh, yeah, work on your passing. Work on it, yeah. Mid-range passing, please. So, uh, so yeah, definitely a lot to look forward to. I mean, uh, a lot of action going on. You got two uh, practice sessions, you know, separated the, the first four days. So there's definitely a lot of action going on in the football world. And, uh, you know, everybody's pretty excited about it, you know. Definitely. Like I said, revel in the fact that Petrino's here. So, uh, like I said, uh, don't forget, tweet us at Topper Talk TV. Give us your predictions for the season. And uh, tell us how much we're going to beat Kentucky by. I mean, that's what we really <laughs> want to know. You know, like I told you before the show, I finally got my ticket situation worked out for that <laughs> one. So, it's kind of real to me now that the season's actually right, pretty close. That's so. good. You're, you're getting a little uh, I'm looking now. forward to it. I'm, I'm getting excited, definitely. All right. Now, we talk about the Kentucky game. Um Kind of saw it just recently where uh, Kentucky is now a five-and-a-half point favorite yeah. over us. Used to be a three-and-a-half point spread. So the boys out in Vegas, 
kind of seeing Kentucky being uh, a little bit more of a favorite mm-hmm. nowadays. A lot of hype uh, with, that's with really, Stoops troops up there. It's really capping a lot of Hilltopper yeah. fans, man. I mean, I, I'm fine with that. You know, if they want to keep making us an underdog, you know, just give us more motivation. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much what it is. It's yeah. more motivation now. I know that uh, Kentucky thinks they were disrespected last season, and I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that they've got like this tweet from Jonathan Dowling uh, taped <laughs> in their locker room. I mean, if anybody's going to talk trash, I feel like Dowling's probably the one. That's going to do it. <laughs> Nothing against him. I mean, yeah. He's well, a good I mean, player. he's kind of he like, he's kind of one of those. If you have four interceptions against the team, you can kind of say what you want about him. He likes to talk a little trash, and <laughs> hey, I mean, he's a good enough player to do that. You For know, sure. and DBs and wide receivers like to talk trash yeah, and all that stuff. Want. So, but yeah, I've heard that there's a little uh, a tweet from Dowling hanging <laughs> up in the players' locker rooms in Kentucky, and um, so I mean, like I said, you know. We're going in being underdogs anyway, despite the fact that we beat them at their place last year. Um, but, yeah, I mean, hey, we'll, we'll relish the underdog role. I mean, that's yeah, what we are. Didn't phase us last year. Um, shouldn't phase us this year. No. So I, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the, the crowd break down if that game is going to be. Obviously, you've got a big stadium we can, we can fill in. And everybody's, thinking that, uh, everybody's thinking that Kentucky will just – saturate right. LP field because well, look it's, it's not an SEC tournament basketball game I mean it's, it's a football game it's so I'm kind of curious right. I know 50,000 people came to their spring game and we didn't surely you know we didn't have that many here right. but you know hey look I'm, I'm curious really. to see how the breakdown is I'm going to say I'm going to kind of lean on the uh, 60-40 probably for uh, that, Kentucky that's fans what I'm thinking. you know I mean, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have a good crowd here um you know, I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of excitement between our program, too. I think, you know, with Petrino being here, off coming off a of bowl season, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people that are really looking forward to football. So, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll make a good showing down there and uh, hopefully have a good product to watch. Yeah, for sure. hopefully so. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're definitely uh, excited about that. And uh, like I said, I think it'll be uh, more Cats fans for sure. But I think uh, Western will show up pretty good. You, know, so. you get the name factor and everything. I know a lot of media will be down there. Yeah. Um, you know, for Stoops, yeah, but mainly I mean, for Petrino. Petrino is definitely I mean, a bigger name just, between the two. Let's just be honest, yeah. mainly for Petrino, right? For sure. <laughs> but, uh, Stoops yeah. has got to win a game first. Which <laughs> is that kind of crazy. Exactly, exactly. He's got to win a game first, so, uh, you know, we're uh, anxious to see, and obviously, you know, Petrino's won his fair share of games. Yeah. You know, one of the top ten coaches by a lot of people in America, uh, that they think, so, you know, we'll see that. Uh, Another kind of tidbit from uh, the practices today is there is a lot of roster changes. Do you have the roster changes? Definitely, for it, uh, I do. All right, Let me get there one second. I do have a I do have a trivia question for you guys. There are some newcomers on the roster. <laughs> now we do have one, Braden Weston. He is a linebacker who transferred from Presbyterian College. If anybody can tweet <laughs> at us at Topper Talk the nickname or the mascot at Presbyterian College, we will mention you on air. Go. I know that one. Okay, well, don't make sure see if anybody else knows it. it. Right. Probably ahead. the best nickname in all of college sports well, for me. There's some well, maybe not there. best, <laughs> most random. But yeah, like you know, Sean said, a lot of a lot of roster uh, changes from last year. Guys that were on the team. Let's do, can we start omissions? Omissions, yeah, yeah. We'll, we can work with that. There's there's some you know some big names. Uh, you know, we'll start with the receivers. You know, Bo Brand and Rico Brown are two guys that got a lot of. Uh, a lot of action last year that, that uh, aren't on the team this year. Yeah, and of course, you know, they came up with a list and earlier before the season started, right. you know, before Pratt, and Bo Brand was on there, but Rico yeah, Brand Rico was, was not. Right, right. So, I mean, that's kind of a surprise, and Rico's going to be a senior, so uh, I thought he was really going to be I, a, one of the receiving uh, leaders on right. the receiving team. That's, so that's one of the few who actually got a good bit of playing time yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, so now it looks like it's uh, – I know Jamario Brown is a senior, and Willie McNeil will be a, a junior, mm-hmm. but definitely Willie's going to be the leader of the receiving core now, you know, right. as far as maybe just seniority, you know. I mean, even though he's a junior, yeah. but uh, – um, you got Cameron Brown in there too, who was a uh, you know pretty highly rated recruit. Uh, I didn't we don't know if we saw much of him last year or not. I don't really. I don't think we did. But uh, I do remember him being a pretty highly rated recruit. Um, you got Darius Washington, that linebacker, who I thought was a pretty good player, had a good future. Yeah, I, I thought know, so too. Uh, what happened with him there? Um, Courtney Dalcourt, local name, kind of had a, a tough career, battled a lot of injuries. Lot yeah. of injuries. <laughs> I got to see him play a lot in high school and was excited when he came here, but it's been a tough road for him. Yeah. Um, Brett Harrington, defensive back, is another guy that. You know, he ended up starting a lot last year. He did. Yeah, he got a lot of playing time. He was a Juco uh, yeah. kid and obviously just came here one year, and now he's not here no more. So just there interesting names that just all of a sudden pop yeah. up on the roster. You know, we got our roster sheets today, and it's like, hey, where's this guy at? Right. Where's this guy at? So, um, we'll see. You got Ben Axon. That's a, kind of a hyped-up running back that was here that we never really saw. He's very hyped of. up. Yeah. A lot of people were asking about him, and he had a lot of talent, but I think just – 
kind of academics and things like that just didn't work out for right. him. Uh, I think he might have got like five carries while he was here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You can't keep your grades up. He, he's kinda. a big guy. He, got, he yeah. had a lot of potential. But like I said, you know, uh, academics and things like that kind of uh, take that potential away. It is so. what it is, yeah. Former starting kicker Jesse Roy no longer on the team Man, also. Are we not going to have a kicker battle? Oh, we got Joe Walker Penny, uh, yeah, who was actually out booming some punts today. I've heard doing, he's a pretty good punter. He's yeah. actually really, yeah, he's actually really good. They were doing some special team drills in the first hour with the veterans out there. He was actually out there with the veterans, and they were uh, trading punts. Uh, actually, Sweatman was out there doing some punting too because they were doing return drills. But uh, Joe Walker Penny, the new kid, he was punting the ball. He was putting the ball with authority. Oh, good deal. I mean, kid, gotta have somebody take hey, the job from Hendricks. I we've kind of been hyping the kid up a little bit, and uh, I think he's going to prove that I just he's, uh, see he's worth the scholarship. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, as a soccer guy, you know, I like to see good kicking. That's so. right. There you go. Um, uh, who else we got here? That's most of the bigger names. Dwayne Montgomery, a defensive lineman. I think he was kind of highly rated out of high school, but I don't believe we saw much of him. Then a few sort of backup offensive linemen too, but. That's, what, 32 names in yeah. total who were it's on a, the opening day roster last it's year? It's a lot of turnover, like I said, from the roster from spring to the yeah. roster now, you know. And, you know, we got some newcomers as well, just a few. Uh, like I said, I mentioned the one kid from Presbyterian College, which I'm still waiting for the nickname for that <laughs> uh, that, uh, that fine school. Give me the nickname of the Presbyterian College, tweeted at us, and we'll mention mm -hmm. you on air. And we got a couple mm -hmm. others that got added. So, I mean, you know, you kind of see that, but, you know, I think it's funny that we saw a, um, you know, a, kind of a short list of players that were not yeah. coming back or maybe got their scholarships pulled, like, uh, you know, Bull Brand and, and Neil Wilson. So we knew we were going to be really seeing it wide receiver, but now we're really seeing it wide receiver because Rico Brown's not coming back. Right. Now, granted, Rico only had nine catches last year, but, I mean, the, the next... He's still on the field for a lot of He, he lot was on the field for a lot, yeah. And uh, so, like I said, I thought he was going to be a senior leader, but uh, obviously he's not going to be on the team this year. So Petrino's going to be stepping... Uh, we're going to have to see these freshmen step up their game and yeah. be a part of the rotation. That's why I mentioned a lot of freshman wide receivers and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the newcomers practice. I mean, just people that shine because these, these players are going to have to see some time on the field, obviously. Yeah. You know, we've got such a shortage of wide receivers. so But we do have some playmakers uh, coming in, so uh, and they made some plays out there, so that should make Hilltopper fans hear, happy. Sure. So, uh, oh, we got two interactions here. Uh oh Do we have? Like no, nobody. <laughs> Kimberly Shield in favor of our tweet. So, <laughs> all right, We've got a little bit of uh, a little bit more football news. Uh, Miami of Ohio and WKU will be playing. Yeah. A series has been announced, and uh, it will begin on two in 2015 on September 26th. We will actually go up to their place and play them at Jaeger Stadium. Hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> And then they will uh, come down here and play us on September 17th, 2016. So uh, kind of had Todd Stewart on the show a couple of shows ago when he was talking about, you know, kind of establishing mm -hmm. those non-conference teams. It's nice to have kind of that local-ish rival, too. Kind of regional. Regional. Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. a better word. I don't want to say local. <laughs> <laughs> Local's yeah. not really true. But. <laughs> but we were actually talking about that, you know, as far as, you know, establishing more regional non-conference rivalries. And, you know, I... But just, I like Miami of Ohio. That's, I think that's a good rivalry. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. a really solid MAC team. Um, you know, but you, kind of like, I've seen some other people throw out the name of, like, Cincinnati and mm -hmm. Missouri play, and teams like that. And I think that would be great. You know, I, and we kind of mentioned that. I kind of brought up the question whenever Todd was on the show. It would be nice to see if we established a non-conference <laughs> series relationship with one of these teams, like maybe a Cincinnati or Missouri, to have the those teams actually come to our place right. and play us here. I mean, I think that would be huge to have a team like Missouri from the SEC, an SEC yeah. team, come here. Because we kind of saw it last year going back to the Monroe thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Monroe you know, beat Arkansas at third place, and they played Auburn at third place, but they also hosted Baylor, which, you know, at the time, Baylor was coming off the RG3, you yeah. know, uh, whole fandom and everything like that. So, I mean, that was a huge game for them. And they had a big whiteout. It was a Friday night primetime game. They were, like, the only game on TV <laughs> that night. And uh, it was a really cool atmosphere down there at Monroe. It just appeared that way on TV, and that's something mm -hmm. I think we need here. We need, like, a big-time yeah. uh, opponent. Wish we would see Kentucky come here, but, you know, they ain't going to yeah, do that. Right. Yeah. Well, we've seen some <laughs> other Sunbelt schools, you know, host SEC and, like, well, the Big Six conferences. Yeah. MTSU got Georgia Tech to come play to there a couple yeah. years ago. I think Troy hosted Mississippi State, if mm -hmm. I remember right. So Yeah, I mean, we've seen it, we've seen it done a lot, you know, yeah. and, you know, as – 
guess programs like us kind of keep building up our uh, our football mm-hmm. stock as a program, you know, and, and being in a part of the FBS and steps, everything. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to see, definitely like to see that. I mean, we've had, you know, South Florida here uh, whenever they were kind of riding high a little bit. and uh, But, you know, it'd be nice to have, like, a big power conference team yeah. uh, here. And, uh, of course, Shane tweets us the answer, but we're not going to – Shane Googled it. Yeah, he cheated. Shane Googled that. And plus, you're part of the show, so we're not going to read off your answer, man. We're still waiting for that uh, answer for the uh, Presbyterian College nickname. <laughs> so uh, Shane, Shane has got it, but, uh, you know, we're not going to read that on air. He's part of the show. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a uh, pretty big game. And then uh, another announcement, um, LSU uh, had a game originally uh, scheduled uh, September 17, 2016, which, of course, is now the date we're going to host Miami of Ohio. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the LSU game has actually been moved to November 14, 2015. So we'll go down to Baton Rouge again on I'm going to make that trip this time. I didn't get to make it last time. Yeah. And that's, their stadium's pretty high up on my bucket list of yeah. college stadiums. Yeah, I think that would be a pretty cool atmosphere. I think that would be a pretty cool atmosphere. You just want to go hang out I, with I just Mike want the, the food. Tiger, right? Mike the Tiger, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I think Mike the Tiger would be a pretty intimidating presence. <laughs> so. I don't know if, if you saw the uh, the Sports Center Top 50. This is Sports Center Countdown. Uh, but you know, Big Red's commer- the the yeah. original Big Red commercial came in at number thirty three on oh, there. Oh really? And then the Mike the Tiger commercial with, with Shaq where he, Shaq climbs up the tree and pulls Mike the Tiger down. <laughs> that was on there too. Nice. Chasing that little rabbit there, I sorry. Could, I could see Shaq doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh like I said, uh you know, thirteen practices open to the public, so uh for WKU football. So fans, if you're fans of Hilltopper Sports, Hilltopper football, uh wanna come check out Bobby Petrino in action. Uh you got plenty of opportunity to come to it. Just go to wkusports.com, and uh, they'll have the schedule on there for that's, you and everything like that. It's a pretty cool so. opportunity to take advantage of, like I said. You know, it's, you know we're definitely a program that's on the rise. So, uh, you know, now's the time to get on board. You know, what better way to learn more about the team than by going to practice and see what all's going on. Exactly. So. Now we have a winner. Uh-oh. Drake Hicks. Nice at, work, Drake. I like his Twitter handle, at thing? Drake's on a plane. Nice. (laughs) He tweets the blue hose, and he is correct. Blue hose. Blue hose of Presbyterian Presbyterian College. And actually, we had a who was it? Stephon Drain. He transferred to Washburn. That were handed up. Wash. No, he transferred to Washburn, uh, which I think is a junior college. But I think their nickname is the. uh, uh, I don't know about this one. Itchy Bonds or something like that. Nice. Yeah, it's a weird name, but uh, yeah. Anyway, some mascot knowledge for you guys out there. <laughs> Presbyterian College, they are the Blue Hose, so shout out to you, Drake Hicks, at Drake's on a Plane. Good work, Drake's on a Plane. Drake's on a Plane, <laughs> representing. <laughs> so you got anything to add, Woody? Yeah, yes, before we I was here, here I, uh, you know, I always like to get my little bit of volleyball information in. I don't Let's know do if it. you're familiar with the volleyball program the last couple of years. You've uh, you've probably seen this little girl, Harley Bryant, that's got to be a part of the team. Um She's uh you know dealt with some pretty bad health problems. She mm-hmm. was uh she was due to have a surgery today, I think, but um they ended up having to take her back for another MRI. So I don't know if they got to the surgery or not. But uh, okay. I just remember her. You know she's been a big part of the Western volleyball team the last little bit. So uh, I know that's a pretty cool part of you know Western. Uh, you know that's that's something cool that the team does. You know, yeah. Reaching out to her, letting her be around. So I know that's uh especially with Coach Hudson. Coach Hudson, you know he's yeah. a pretty solid guy. You know, and I know their uh, hearts are probably pretty heavy for her today. So yeah. uh, just remember her in your prayers and thoughts and. Yeah, yeah. The volleyball season starting up soon. Come Definitely. out and watch them get some wins. And we are actually uh, currently campaigning to have Coach Hudson on the show. Come on, Travis. So Why we're hoping to? Uh, hoping he uh, comes on the show. Maybe not next week. You're not going to be. I'm going to be here next week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to talking uh, to him. So. In two weeks, Coach, you can come on the show <laughs> and hang out with us. I know Woody is uh, pretty excited about I that. I love volleyball. Of course, you're a big volleyball fan. I am. And you like soccer and all that stuff. Soccer starts next Friday, not this week, but next week, the 16th. So, yeah. Come on out and watch soccer too. Come on out and watch soccer. We got 15 seconds left, so we want to. Say thank you for watching another great episode of Top of the At least I thought it was great. I thought it was you? great. All right. Well, stay <laughs> tuned. Next week. See you week. next week. Not me. But same time. Same here. channel. Peace. <laughs>